Hi, this video is about work and power in rotational motion, and it's key to Young and Friedman's University Physics, uh, Chapter 10, the fourth section. You might remember back in Chapter 6, or if you're using a different textbook, wherever they did straight line motion in relation to work, um, that work equals force times distance. So if I exert a force on something, and I make it move a certain distance, uh, then the, the work done is going to equal the force times the distance. The force is in newtons, usually. There are other, you know, you can, can use other measurements, but if the force is in newton, newtons and the distance is in meters, uh, then we say that the work done is in joules, which, surprisingly, is newton meters. So if we have force in newtons and distance in meters, we multiply them together and we, we have newton meters. And in work, we call that a joule. Uh, joules are used elsewhere in physics, but for work um, uh, of this sort, we're going to call it neuter, newton meters. So, um, now, that's fairly easy uh, if, if the force and the distance are lined up. What if the force is going at a different angle to the distance that it moves? Then we have a slightly different situation, because we're not interested in multiplying the force going this way times the distance it moves this way. And so what we do is we find the dot product. If you remember the dot product uh, way back in Chapter 1, there's a video on it as well, videos on all this stuff. Um, so the dot product, what all, the, all it basically does is the dot product means that we're only interested in the part of the force that's going in the same direction as the distance. So we don't want to multiply just some strange um, force going this way times uh, the distance, but we want to multiply the force going in the same direction in the distance. The dot product only means that we're lining things up. We're finding the part of the force going in the same direction as the distance, and that's the work uh, done there. The dot product basically um, is based upon the cosine of the angle between the force and the distance it's going, the direction the distance is going. So if the force is going this way and the distance is going this way, then the angle in between them is theta, and the cosine gives you the component of the force that's going in the same direction. By the way, uh, the the um, seventh Star Wars movie just came out last week, so I, I'm here, sitting here talking about force, and I keep thinking about how, how can I can work out some kind of a Star Wars joke. Well, maybe you can come up with one. But anyway, so the, the part of the force going in the same direction uh, as the distance, that's what we're interested in when we're figuring out the work. So F cosine theta gives you the part of the force that's going in the direction, uh, same direction as the direction, um, and those two multiplied together gives you the work. Or in shorthand, force times distance times cosine theta. Fs cosine theta is another way of saying the dot product uh, between the, f the force going in whatever direction, dark side or for the good, um, times the distance. Okay, that's review. Now, the rotational analog, as we found, um, is very much similar, just with the, the substitute, the, the rotational equivalence. So, for example, if we have an infinitesimal change in work, dW, that's going to equal the tangential force, force times the distance, which is, uh, in rotating things, the distance is um, the radius times the infinitesimal change in theta. Um, if you go back to uh, chapter 9, 9 1 especially, um, you can rem remember what radian measurement's like. So uh, rd theta tells you how far it moves on the outside of the circle. Uh, the tangential force, uh, um, Young and Friedman used the example of a merry-go-round. If you're pushing a merry-go-round, um, then you're pushing tangential to the circle. Um, and so the force, tangential, times the, the radius times the uh, the, the change in, in theta, or uh, the distance, uh, because rd theta tells you how far it's moved along the outside of the circle, review, chapter 9. So this is basically another way of saying force times distance, but in relation to something that's, that's rotating. Uh, again, uh, rd theta is the infinitesimal distance traveled along the edge of the circle. Uh, force tangent is the force directed tangential to that moving point. Um, and then dW is the infinitesimal work done in that moment of change. Okay? Everybody happy? Work equals force times distance. So here we're saying that work equals force on the edge of the circle times the distance traveled, which is the radius times the change of the theta 
uh, in radians. Okay, there you have it. Now, wait a minute here. Um, I seem to remember earlier uh, in chapter 10 that uh, the force times the lever arm, as it were, is the torque. Do you remember that? F tangential times the radius, which is the lever arm here, is another name for the torque. So we can, we can do some substitution into this F tangent R d theta. We can substitute uh, torque for F tan tangent R and end up with this equation that the infinitesimal change in work equals the torque uh, times the infinitesimal change in the angle uh, theta of the, of, of the circle, this angle, radian angle. Now, you'll notice that the torque has a z on it. Why? Uh, because torque involves a cross product. We had a dot product earlier uh, in this video. Uh, the cross product is three-dimensional. We use the right-hand rule, remember? Uh, we use the right-hand rule to figure out which direction uh, the torque is going out of the page, as it were. Um, and so the z there reminds us that this is a, uh, a third dimensional uh, force and not just a, um, a two-dimensional one. Um, here's, here's the way to, to then put it in integral form. So the work is the integral from theta 1 to theta 2 of the torque d theta. Um, now, if the torque is constant, this reduces to a, a very simple equation uh, that basically work equals the torque times the change in angle, uh, which is the distance, uh, or uh, the torque uh, delta theta um, equals the work. Now, the reason we use the integral is because what if, what if the um, uh, torque is not constant? What if the torque is, did I say torque? Yeah. If the torque is not constant, then it gets a little more complicated with the integral form. Uh, but if the torque is constant, then it simply reduces to um, this torque times the change in, in angle, which is the distance. Okay, so there we have another uh, set of equations that we can use to solve various torque problems. Um, some more things that we can see the analog between straight line work and rotational work. So remember the work energy theorem uh, from, again, back in Chapter 6 of Young and Friedman? It basically said that the total work done is equal to the difference in kinetic energy before and after. So if you have a certain amount of kinetic energy before and then a certain amount of kinetic energy after, the difference between the kinetic energy before and the kinetic energy after is the total work that's been done. The total change in work is the difference in kinetic energy uh, before and after some uh, event. So also with rotational, remember that kinetic energy with with rotational uh, uh, energy uh, is one half I omega squared, where I is the moment of inertia, which is different for different kinds of objects, and omega is the angular uh, velocity, the velocity of th the theta in, per time. And so you can see that the um, the work energy theorem works exactly by analogy um, in relation to rotational work done as well. The total work done in rotational energy uh, equals the initial kinetic energy, one-half I omega squared, minus the final kinetic energy, one-half I omega squared. Um, same thing, just um, substituting the, the relevant analogous items in rotation. Okay, finally we have power. Um, you might remember that power is the change in work per time. Uh, so dw dt equals power. So um, if power uh, in relation to rotational um, situations is dw equals torque dt, uh, then we can see that power um, is going to be the, the, again, we take the derivative of the work, uh, dw dt equals torque times d theta dt. Well, um, dw dt is, is power, and d theta dt is angular velocity. And so the power um, uh, in relation to something uh, rotating is the torque times the angular velocity. Uh, and there we have it. There we have the rotational anal uh, analogs for work and power uh, to, to what we saw in straight line motion in relation to work and power in chapter 6.